So time for us to investigate the alpha and beta decays. We actually will not do gamma decays in this particular example. And our question is, will a particular decay proceed spontaneously? Our method of deciding this will be mass. So if the mass of the original nucleus is greater than the mass of the products, then the uh, decay can be spontaneous. There'll be mass available to create the products and have some mass left over to give them kinetic energy. If there's more mass in the products in some proposed uh, decay, then uh, this will not be spontaneous. Uh, we would have to add some extra energy to the starting nucleus to allow mass to be created, uh, developed, um, exist in the uh, in the product. So our our situation is we need to go to a table and look up for this nickel 60, look up what the mass is, and we do that 59.930788 for the iron 56 55. 0.934939, and these are in atomic mass units. The alpha, 4.002603. The other thing to be aware of here, these are the masses of neutral atoms. So this mass includes 28 electrons. This mass includes 26 electrons. This mass includes two electrons, and that is fine. Uh, that the electrons are included here, even though we're considered nuclear events in this situation, uh, because we're going to be calculating mass difference. And we'll have 28 electrons in here in this number, the mass, 28 electrons in this number. When we subtract, then uh, the electrons uh, have no effect on the result. So our, our task is to first add these two masses, the iron and the alpha, and in doing that, 59.937542 use. And now inspect uh, the starting mass, 59.930. Ending mass, 59.937. There's more mass here. This is not spontaneous. There's not enough mass in the nickel to create the mass in the proposed uh, products here. So somebody suggests is this, this might be a possible uh, alpha decay. We can say, no, it's not going to happen in the real world. Uh, it's not spontaneous. Um, we don't have enough mass. So let's go to the next one, a beta decay. And this one, we have cobalt 60 uh, becoming nickel 60, and then the beta coming off here. And page is a little bit incomplete, antineutrino in this normal beta decay. Um, so again, we go to a table and look up the masses, or cobalt 60, 59.933819. The nickel 60 is 59.930788. And well, what about these two, the beta and the antineutrino? Let's talk about the antineutrino first. They're almost zero mass, and their mass is uncertain, but it's on the order of 2 times 10 to the minus 10 atomic mass units. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, out to here. It's ignorable. We're not going to include the antineutrino mass in our calculation. Over on the, the cobalt 60, it has 27 electrons. That's the uh, number of electrons used to when we find this mass. Here, this nickel has 28 electrons. However, in this actual process that occurs, uh, we've got 27 electrons in the electron cloud for the cobalt 60. This cobalt nucleus changes to nickel. The cloud stays as is, 27 electrons. To get the 28th electron to produce this mass, this beta is included 
in this number. You do not need a separate number for the mass of the electron and atomic mass units and add that in here. That would be an error. Okay, let's look at what we have. We have 59.933 here, 59.930. There is more mass on the left side. So yes, this is spontaneous. It can be spontaneous. There'll be a certain half-life for this reaction. Again, you could look up in uh, a table on that. What about the energy available? Well, now we would calculate the uh, difference in the mass. The starting mass of the original nucleus minus the product's mass. And when you do that, you should use your own calculator and do that. You get 0 0.003031 U's. I'll convert that to MEVs with the conversion factor, 931.5 MEVs for 1 U. And I find that there's an energy release here of uh, 2.82 MEVs. So that's the basic calculation, and really you could stop. I do need to inform you that this will not be the energy of the beta particle. This will not be the kinetic energy of the beta. Um, in the action here of this beta decay, the nickel atom, nickel nucleus that is uh, created, uh, is produced, or becomes into existence, nickel, uh, with the 28 protons. Uh, is excited. It's going to have protons and neutrons in upper energy levels and they emit uh, gamma rays that decay uh, with again some half-life. But that is uh, a significant portion of this total energy. Uh, so the beta decay will actually have less than this. Also the antineutrino uses up some of this supply of energy. So the kinetic energy of the beta we're not going to go into the details, but it'll be less than 2.82 MeVs. Significantly less. You can find that in the table. All I want you to be able to do for Professor Clement's class is to be able to calculate this mass difference and decide if the uh, decay can be spontaneous or not. In this case, it, was, it can be spontaneous. It can occur naturally because we have more mass in the starting nucleus than we have in the products. And then be careful, uh, there's 27 electrons in this uh, number. This nickel that's produced has 27 electrons after the reaction occurs. The beta allows us to get 28 electrons that we need for this number from the table. Uh, we need a neutral nickel atom and 28 electrons in process of that. So there's our calculation. Ask questions in class. Try some of your own uh, examples here for alpha and beta decay and see if the reaction is spontaneous or not.